Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with immigration attorney Brian D. Lerner. Uh, today we're going to talk about multinational manager visas, but first uh, I, I have a technical problem and I need some uh, suggestions if you have them. Uh, it, it turns out that I, I do make pretty good videos but the audio is not real great and since I'm not a technical person as far as the audio aspects of it uh, if anybody listening to this happens to know uh, or suggest what I can plug in to make the audio uh, clearer and better on my videos uh, let me know send me the suggestions and uh, I'll be appreciative and see what I can do to make it easier and better for everybody to listen on in uh, okay, now, what is the multinational manager visa and when does this come into effect? Well, a lot of people, they don't know about the multinational manager visa. That, that's the fact. Uh, and, you know, basically it comes into play when somebody comes into my office and they say, I have uh, somebody or I have a bunch of money I want to invest in a business. What can I do to get the EB-5? And the EB-5, you can look at some of my other videos, that's the... Uh, one for the green card, but it's the one where you have to invest a million or if you're going to invest only 500,000, it'll be in a regional center upon which you may lose your money, you may not lose your money, uh, you know, the regional center may go out of business and if you do start your own with the million dollar investment, uh, you may not get, uh, you know, the 10 employees uh, later to verify that they are working for you in the capacity they need to. Um, you may not even be able to show that the business has properly transferred the money. Uh, and then with the EB-5, and, and the reason I'm talking uh, initially about the EB-5 is because this is where everybody's heard about the investment visa. Um, even if you get approved, it's a conditional green card. And two years later, you have to file a whole nother petition to remove the condition, and it's not easy. Uh, you don't just file another petition and say, uh, yep, here's the 10 employees I created, here's the million dollars I've invested, here's the business, and everything's fine, goodbye, thanks, give me my permanent green card. It, it doesn't work like that. So then the question becomes, if you have all that money to invest, and you, you want to get the green card. Now, I can tell you right now that a lot of people want to get the green card because they want their kids to get the green card. They want their kids to be able to go to school here in the U.S. and they want them to benefit. And time is a, a usually of the essence. Their kids are many times around 17 or 18 or somewhere in that neighborhood. And they know that once the kids reach 21, they're not going to be able to basically benefit from their applications. So. The question becomes, well, if, if you want to get the green card and you've got all this money, is there an easier, better, faster way to go forward and get the green card other than the EB-5? And the answer is, under most circumstances, the answer is yes. It is the EB-1C Multinational Manager Visa. Now, first of all, what does that mean? Well, multinational manager is really just what it says. Multi is more than one. National is in two different countries. And manager is you are a manager or executive of a company that is either, well, that is in your home country and one that's in the U.S. And so the United States gives priority to multinational manager visas. That means you don't have to file a labor certification or perm. You don't have to prove that there are no available U.S. workers. There is no waiting list, at least right now. You know, if you're watching this video six months from now, who knows? But as of right now, there's no waiting list. That uh, it, it, once it's issued, it's permanent, meaning the 10-year permanent green card. There's no, uh, there's no conditional residence on a multinational manager visa. You don't have to have a million dollars. You can have it if you want, but you don't have to have it. You don't even have to have 500000 um, The amount of the investment much less important on a multinational manager visa. So the first question you, you have to ask uh, in order to know if, if at least at some basis you qualify is if you have your own business in your own country. 
Uh, if you have your own business in your own country and you have been working there for at least one year, in the past three years, uh, you can't have worked there, you know, for one year, 12 years ago. Okay, so basically, for all intents and purposes, if you have a current company that you're running in your home country, that's the first thing you need in order to be able to go forward. Now, when you, when you apply for the multinational manager visa, understand that it's uh, not everything all at once, meaning that first you apply to see if it'll be approved. And then if it's approved, then you can apply for consulate processing if you're not inside the U.S. for your green card or lawful permanent residency for your spouse and for your unmarried children under 21. All of them can come as derivative beneficiaries of the multinational manager visa. So with one approved application, and, and you know if you have four kids and you're married, after one approved application, you can put in for the lawful permanent residency for five people. Okay, that's just in my example. If you have 12 kids, then you can do it for 13 people. Uh, so either way, that's, that's what you have to keep in mind uh, when you're doing it. Now, if you're in the U.S., uh, then of course you can adjust status if you're eligible to adjust once the multinational manager visa is approved. Now, just so you know, normally the path is you have your own business and then what happens is you get uh, an L1 visa to come to the U.S. as a non-immigrant and then eventually you can, you know, apply then for, to the multinational manager. So again, it's L1, multinational manager, adjustment, and lawful permanent residency. But again, if if you are in a position where you know your kids are going to age out and they're not going to be able to benefit from your petition and if you have the ability to do a multinational manager you may as well do it where your kids will benefit um, you can hop right into the multinational manager uh, without doing the L1 it is a bit more difficult to do it that way and there is more evidence and proof that you need to do but it certainly is doable so let me let me go over some of the requirements that are needed to do the multinational manager with the understanding that essentially when you get a business here in the US yes it has to be a real business it should be in business for more than a year you're not going to do a multinational manager and just start a business from scratch you're going to buy a business that's been in business for at least a year and uh, there it needs to be a reasonable investment you know, I mean, it could be 50000 100000 200000 Again, it has to be whatever the actual fair market value of the company is. But again, it's the, the, the amount of the money is not important as it would be with an EB-5. They don't look and make sure that you have 500000 if you're in a regional center or a million if you are uh, investing in your own company. So... Again, you need to be employed abroad uh, for at least one year in the last three. And it needs to be uh, a firm, a corporation, or other legal entity that is an affiliate or subsidiary of uh, the U.S. company. So the ownership of the two companies is very important. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, I can work the magic so that, you know, we get uh, the proper ownership by selling the stock or... Uh, you know, issuing more stock to a different party in order to make it so the ownership works. Now, now, for all intents and purposes, you, you need to basically have, and there, there's lots of variations on this, but you, you need to basically have a company, let's just say you're from the UK. You need to have a company in the UK, and then you need to have a company here in the US owned by the same people so that can be that can be worked in different ways uh, you can have the company in the UK buy a company here in the US or you can have a company in the US buy a company in the UK or you could have the same shareholders in each company in the same proportion uh, with both companies there's different ways of doing it and 
the companies themselves don't even need to be the same type of company. I mean, it, it makes it more difficult to get approved if that's the case. And for example, if, you, if you're in the UK and you have a clothes manufacturing business and you buy a Kentucky Fried Chicken in the US, they might wonder uh, what, what uh, abilities you have to run a Kentucky Fried Chicken and tailor a suit. Uh, but it can be done. You know, obviously, if you are in the neighborhood of applying for a multinational manager visa anyways, you, uh, you, you've pretty much uh, been fairly successful in what you've done to this point. So it's certainly a doable argument. But if you, for example, have a clothes manufacturing business in, uh, in, in the UK, it would be nice and smoother if you buy, for example, a distribution center possibly in the US or a distribution outlet or even another clothes manufacturing uh, or clothes sales uh, company here in the U.S. Something that complements or makes it so it's similar to what the company is in your home country. So if, if uh, first if you have the uh, various uh, legal entity with the ownership that's correct and you have the necessary time that you've worked at the company abroad, you are able to then move on to the next step in order to move forward. Now, what, just one issue on the, the one year of the last three year requirements. Now, let's say that you've been working for the same employer uh, and you've been inside the U.S. in a non-immigrant status such as an L1. You will meet that requirement even though you have not been outside the U.S for one of the last three years. So that's a, a nice little caveat uh, to that. Now, when submitting the petition, obviously, you need to establish that the companies, the parent, affiliate, or subsidiary corporation uh, uh, has the requisite qualifying relationship, okay? And that relationship must continue uh, all the way through when you're issued the approval. So for example, if you think that you're going to get the approval coming to the U.S. and three seconds later close up shop, that, that might be considered fraud and that would not qualify. And especially if you're at the interview and the company's already closed up in your home country because you know you're coming to the U.S. So with a multinational manager, unlike with the EB-5, you do have to have two companies running at the same time. Uh, but in my opinion, if you can do that, it's better than the EB-5. So, the next thing uh, you have to be aware of is, again, no labor certification. This is a first preference employment petition, meaning the U.S. likes these companies, likes this category. They know it creates money, it creates jobs, it creates more uh, better economy. So that's why they put it to the top and, and you don't have to do the labor cert. Just so you know, you do a perm today. Uh, that you have less than a master's degree, you're going to be waiting three to five years for that visa number to become current. No such waiting in uh, the multinational manager. Now, one of the uh, difficult parts, or the more difficult parts, of a multinational manager petition is you, you have to have a managerial or executive capacity Okay, and that needs to be in both. And you, not your other employees, not your spouse, you, the one who's applying for the multinational manager visa, must have uh, either a managerial or executive capacity in order to run the company. Now, what does that mean? Well, managerial capacity, and, and there's several elements to it. You have to manage the, or, and or, the organization, department, subdivision, function, or component, and each one of those has all kinds of laws to what that is. Uh, you have to supervise and control the work of other supervisorial, professional, or managerial employees, not just you know, the people making the hamburgers. You have to uh, essentially supervise the supervisors. Okay? They're, they're, you have to be a couple levels up. Uh, and you have to have the authority to hire and fire or recommend who can be hire, uh, uh, hired and fired. And you have to uh, exercise discretion over the day-to-day -day operations of the particular activity or function of this, of this uh, segment of the company. Now, keep in mind, first-line supervisors are not considered managers unless that you supervise professionals, okay? Uh, and 
the, the definition of executive capacity as different, okay, keep in mind they're, they're not the same thing. It's either manager or executive. Uh, you have to direct the management of the organization or a component or function. You have to establish the goals and policies. You have to exercise wide latitude in discretionary decision making and you, you only receive general supervision or direction from higher level executives. So, uh, you know, keep in mind also a professional may be a manager or an executive depending. So, this is usually where the difficulty comes in in multinational manager visas is getting the proper duties and the proper description of what you are because they want to make sure that you're, you know, basically not going to be running the cash register uh, and coming in on a multinational manager visa. Okay, I mean it doesn't have to be IBM, and you don't have to have 20,000 employees and 14 levels of uh, super uh, employees under you, but still by the same token, uh, it needs to be sufficient to meet the qualifications. And you, you need to, as far as the evidence that needs to be submitted, uh, of course you need to submit all the evidence to show the qualifying relationship of the corporations. You need to submit the various evidence that uh, you are in a managerial or executive capacity. You need to show the company is open and operating abroad and there's all kinds of evidence that needs to be shown for that. And you must show that the corporation is active, not just a shell, not just for the purposes of trying to get the uh, multinational manager visa. Now generally it's not reviewable uh, through judicial review once it's denied because it's a discretionary decision. So if it's not done properly and denied, and you know, and you come to my office, I mean, technically I could try to make a motion to reopen. There's various other paths that we could take, but obviously you want to put the best foot forward in, in, in doing this type of petition so that you have the best chance possible of it being, uh, you know, approved in the first place. So if you think you might qualify for a multinational manager visa, go ahead, and give me a call. I'll be happy to. Uh, give you a consultation and then we'll go for there. More in the coming video.